Happy Halloween, everybody! To celebrate this spooky holiday, today Ed and I are going to create a graveyard-themed tarantula habitat, but the best part is we're going to use real bones. <music> First things first, look at all the decorations Emily put up. Look at that! I think this might be the most decorations you've ever had in a video. I'm pretty sure it is. I kind of went all out. Also like the, the phantom planter back there that you just got for Christmas. Thank you, yep. Early Christmas from my best friend Sean. We thought about making a graveyard theme enclosure for our curly hair tarantula, Grace, but then we figured she's been on the channel a lot recently, so instead we actually kidnapped our friend's OBT, or orange bitey thing. Their more official common name is the orange baboon tarantula, and the scientific is Pteranoculus murinus, or Pteranoculus murinus. There's a couple different pronunciations of the scientific name, but as I was told many times in my college career, the pronunciation of an animal's scientific name isn't as important as actually spelling it correctly. Make sure you have the first one capitalized, the second one not capitalized. Exactly. We'll have it on the screen for you right there. You can pronounce it wherever you see fit. The orange baboon tarantula, or OBT for short, has its other uh, common name of orange bitey thing for good reason. As you can imagine, oh, I'm sorry, buddy, I kind of tore apart your red wet there. They are a gorgeous old world species of tarantula, but they are not very handleable at all, and they're definitely not a beginner species. I'm not too worried about ripping up the web here because we're going to be moving him to a new enclosure today anyway, so that's why I opened the lid all the way, which we normally wouldn't do, but now you can really see them. Mm -hmm. Look at those colors. Colors. He's gorgeous. Yeah, he is. This is Hannibal. He belongs to a couple friends of ours. And yeah, we kidnapped him today to give him a home makeover that is graveyard themed. Being an old world species of tarantula, the OBT is actually one that will bite out of self-defense rather than flick urticating hairs at you like the new world species will. This means though that their, their venom is medically significant. It, it's not gonna kill you, but it'll cause severe pain and swelling and you might actually have to go to a hospital if you do get bit by one. So this is not a tarantula we're going to be holding in today's video, even though Hannibal here is unusually handleable for an OBT. I also hear they're like super fast. Yes, they are very, very fast. Like or what was it, teleporting yeah, fast? Yeah, they're known to teleport. That's how fast they are. So don't let his slow movements right now fool you. They are very fast moving. As you can see, this species does create a little bit of a web. They are terrestrial, but they do have some arboreal tendencies. So they do climb around a little bit, even though they will burrow too. So you kind of have to offer them both burrowing opportunities and climbing opportunities. Oh, look at that threat display. Yeah, this is what they're typically like. Not a species for beginners and not a species you want to handle, but gosh, they are pretty. Yes, they are. Look at the head stamp. Yeah. And May he fits Halloween perfectly. He's he, orange. Yeah, he does. He's perfect for this Halloween themed video. All right, buddy, should we leave you alone so we can set up your new enclosure? Yeah, moving him over to it's going to be interesting. Yes, it will. You hang tight while we get your new enclosure ready. The recommended size of an enclosure for an adult OBT is just a 12 by 12 by 12 uh, exoterra front opening works just fine. But we're going to move him into this because he's now big enough for it. Males get about three to four inches long, whereas females get about four to upwards of six inches long. So a female would need something slightly larger. But for a male like uh, we believe Hannibal, is this 12 by 12 by 12 is going to work perfectly for him. OBTs are native to the grasslands and savannas of Africa, so it's recommended to use kind of a drier substrate that still is deep enough to allow them to burrow in. We're going to use Eco Earth today. It's a little bit damper than I would like, but it'll dry out after a couple days and then it'll be perfect. Yeah, it's uh, winter here now, so everything's dry. Yeah, yeah, winter in Wisconsin. That's yeah. Right. You're looking for a scoop? Yeah, I need one of those like beta cups for mm. a scoop for the substrate. What about what about a measuring cup? Like what oh. we use for food. Oh yeah, that'll work. Alright. Yeah, ah, look at that good cup right there. <laughs> we also added some sands to the eco earth to allow it to drain and therefore dry a little faster too. Oh Emily. I know. How could you put dirt there? Oh no. Don't tell Danae. Yeah, this is not our tank. <laughs> Hooray! It got dirt in it now. Yeah, we've got a few inches of dirt here to allow him to burrow, but now we also have to figure out what to give him to climb. They'll kind of build their webbing on um, sturdy structures or objects in their enclosure, so we have to find some good objects, but to keep with the graveyard theme, we've got to use bones. Yeah. We're totally using bones for this. Oh yeah. The reason why we're using bones is because they provide that nice sturdy object for him to climb on and make webbing from, and they're completely safe to use.
use interracial enclosures. Not to mention, they fit the Halloween theme perfectly and they are gonna look sweet. We actually have a whole bucket of bones here because when you live near a train track, uh, dead animals are inevitable. So, a couple months ago, when it was warmer outside, I actually went out near the railroad tracks and found deer carcasses that had been decomposing for quite some time and were literally just bones left behind. But this is a vertebrae from a deer. We've got, this looks like a hip bone from a deer. I mean, it's been a while since I was in college and had to memorize what all of these were. But we've got a femur? femur probably. Maybe? Looks maybe but a little... is it a front leg or a back leg? I don't know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> College was a long time ago. And I guess deer uh, were not your main study. No, I, I think I only had like a partial semester on deer skeletons. Ooh. Yeah, we've got lots of rib bones rib too. Rib bones. Yeah, really so we have cool. like a whole deer skeleton in a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> Here is some of what we have to work with. We have some leg bones, a jaw bone. You got the cool looking deer teeth. We have part of a uh, skull here. That's cool. Yeah. So we also have some actual skulls that we're gonna use later, but I figured we'd start with the basics and then add the cool stuff afterwards. All right, should we start uh, designing? Sure. Okay. It'd be cool to arrange the ribs so that they kind of look like a rib cage in here, but I don't know how you do that. Except there's definitely a right rib bone and a left rib bone, so we have to get like all the left to match up. What if I hot glued the rib bones like to be like a little ladder to go up because they like to climb sometimes? I guess as long as he doesn't, he can't <clears throat> fall through the center because they will still hurt themselves if they fall too far. That's true, so I need something in the center to be a platform. Oh, that's right. Hot glue melts these backgrounds. Ha! <laughs> yes, uh, it does. Forgot about that. Whoops. Dene, I might owe you a new background. These aren't the uh, Universal Rocks backgrounds. No. That hot glue just melted right through it. Yes, it did. Have our rib cage done. That's really cool. We could even like dig out under here a little bit more so he can like go under and into here if he wanted to. Nice, good thinking. So we pretty much have a dead deer in here so far. Yep. Now we need another animal. What if we did like a predatory skull at the top? So, well, okay, change of plans. <laughs> we are actually going to swap out the deer skull with a coyote skull. That looks Awesome! I think it's gonna look amazing. This is a real coyote skull too that was actually, it was bought online. This one wasn't one of the uh, train killed animals that we came across. Like this? You think? Uh, I like it the other way. The other way? Okay. Yeah. Ah, look! Carnassio right there! That's, that's meant for um, bone crushing. That's what that oh. bone is for. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen dogs do that before. Yep, dogs have the Carnassial pair too. It's a pair of enlarged molars that are just built for breaking bones. That's it, that's your carnassial pair. If you have dogs at home, I mean, if they're nice enough to let you do it, try to find their carnassial pair. Yep, just open up their mouth and go, let me see it. Yeah. Oh. Show me your teeth. That looks awesome. That does. Oh, I could even hollow it out a little bit so we could use it as a hide. <laughs> nice. So the next thing we're thinking is we're gonna mix it up like color-wise so it's not just all bones and add some cork bark. And we think the best place for that would be right on top of our rib bone ladder. That way, if Hannibal climbs up to the top, he can't fall down if we have a piece of cork bark here instead. The next item we want to put in this enclosure has a really unique story behind it. Ed and I were in the Taco Bell parking lot eating. Uh, I think it was Arby's. Arby's, yes, it was Arby's. We were sitting in our cars, because you can't eat inside right now. We were sitting in our cars eating Arby's, and we see this squirrel jumping, or, or like running in front of our car with like 20, 20 feet away with something in its mouth. If I remember correctly, it was a really fat squirrel. It was a fat squirrel, yeah. yes, that is important. And he hopped up onto, I think, a, a tree trunk? Yeah, like a pedestal of some kind. Yep. He he sat on this tree stump with this object and he was chewing on it, chewing on it, chewing on it. Finally he jumped off, ran to the base of another tree, dug a little hole, stuffed it in there, and ran away. So I went out there and I looked in his little cache and what he had left behind and was chewing on and had tried to bury was a rabbit skull. Yeah. 
Can you believe that? I don't know how in the world a squirrel found a rabbit skull. Or why in the world he was chewing on it. Calcium, maybe? Yeah. I it's just know. a metal squirrel. It's just a metal yeah. squirrel, yeah. So that's the story behind the rabbit skull that we have. And I think we have to add it to this enclosure too. You can see like all this lattice work looking like details in the skull that's called fenestration. And rabbit skulls have a lot of fenestration because they breed so much. They breed for quantity, not quality, because they are a prey item to everything. So their skulls, oops, it's one of its incisors just came out. Let's uh, just... just put that back in. Actually, that kind of shows the incisor growth. With all rodents, including rabbits, the front incisors, they have two sets of them. They grow continuously throughout their life, so they have to constantly be chewing on things in order to keep them trimmed down. So if I pull this incisor out, you can really see how long of a bone that is. That just like, that's just insane to me. I don't know. I it find that. growing and growing. Yeah, it really does. So we'll put our rabbit skull, our lagomorph back here. You can look the other way. Well, should we Bye. add some greenery? Sure. Now we've got a water dish for him. I think that looks good. Yeah, I do too. I yeah. like it. Yeah, you're right. There's plenty of things to safely climb on, yet yep. places to hide underneath. There's thick substrate for him to burrow in. Oh, that looks so cool. I might have to just steal Hannibal forever so we can have this enclosure too. Should we move all the bones first? Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> There's all of this <laughs> that we didn't use. Okay, let's yeah. clean up the bones and put Hannibal in. All right. Let's, let's see what see, Hannibal uh, thinks. See how he reacts to this. Hi, hey, buddy. He hasn't moved, and I don't think he appreciates that we destroyed his web. We're going to use our handy dandy macaw feather to kind of nudge him in the right direction. I'm going <laughs> to laugh when he jumps out of there and Oh my gosh, escapes. here. Okay, Hannibal, let's go in. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, jeez, oh, Pete. Wow. He killed that feather. Yeah, good job, buddy. I'm, that's why we use a feather and not our hands. Look at those fangs. Wow, he's oh still trying God. to bite yes, it. he is. Wow, dude. Yeah, you are not happy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's still the feather. You're not going to do anything by biting it. Jeez, let me just uh, pull this back. Okay, wow. okay. So yeah, there's a prime example as to why you do not hold the orange bitey things. Yeah, also why they're not a beginner species of tarantula. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful and their care actually isn't that difficult at all. They're pretty hardy from what I understand, but... Do like you... most old world tarantulas, they are a look at species, not a I'm gonna hold that species. Exactly, but it's perfect for a Halloween episode. Buddy, can we, can we move though? Yeah, come on, follow the feather. Follow the feather. Oh my goodness, look at those fangs. You're looking right at me. Come on in, Hannibal. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Is he biting it? No, oh, oh, now he, he is. Now back into my old web. No, no, buddy. I'm so sorry. Let's turn around. No, you're big enough, dude. You're getting upgraded now. There you go. Slowest tarantula <laughs> ever. Okay. I don't think he approves yet. No, not yet. He's like, it's too new. There's no webs anywhere. I have yeah. to recreate my home. Well, we're gonna give Hannibal some time to adjust and let's see how he likes his new home. How can he climb on glass like that? I don't They've got like, st his his feet felt sticky on the feather itself. Not oh, sticky, really? but like he's got a grip with them. So. But it's glass. How? Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe he will be able. I was having doubts if he'd be able to climb up these ribs to get oh, up yeah. here. He'll totally climb but up those. If he can climb on the glass like that, mm -hmm. I fully expect him to be able to. Oh, he's gonna love this, I think. He has a good combination of places to hide and places to climb on. So it'll be interesting to see how he makes this habitat his new home, like where he puts his webs and where he hangs out most of the time. So it'd be really neat to revisit this after like 
a month or so yeah. from kind of settling in. This video will be coming out before then though because Halloween is about two weeks away and Ed is changing all of the I lights know. as I talk. looks like a ghost during Halloween. It's Halloween. I'm supposed to look like a yeah. ghost because I'm in the Midwest and we all look like a bunch of dead Yay. fish. Thank you everybody for watching today's video and I hope that we were maybe able to inspire some other invertebrate enclosure builds like this. Again, you can use real bones if you, you know, legally obtain them like we made sure we did. You know what would be pretty metal? What? Human bones. <sighs> no, that's too far. I think you can get human bones. Yeah, you can buy them. There's a place in St. Paul, Studio Pain. Oh uh, yeah, and there's also the place down in uh, Chicago. The yeah. Woolly Mammoth or Yeah, something? the Woolly Mammoth. They have a bunch yeah. of human bones Ugh, for sale. Yeah, weird. No, that crosses a, a no, line. No, mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. Weird. Plus they're really expensive. I, I mean, I know that, but... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let us know in the comments if you would use human bones or not in a tarantula enclosure. I don't think I would, but Ed might. Thank you to all of the Patreon backers for all of your amazing support as always. You're so generous and allow us to do fun builds like this. Thank you everybody for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed our Halloween special and we'll see you next time. Happy Halloween! First things first, look at all the degrees. There we go. Okay, make sure to wash that cup. I don't want to taste sand <laughs> in the next thing we make. <laughs> Oh yeah, you could even wind that into the skulls, or into the, the vertebrae, or the vertebrae, the ribs. <laughs> You'll get the bones eventually. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that's scary. <laughs> this is how Ed dies. <laughs> Emily pushes a train to look towards him, and he teleports onto Ed's arm and kills him. Move forward just a little. Okay, Hannibal, let's go in. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, jeez, oh, Pete's. Wow! He killed that feather. Yeah, good job, buddy.